So just to set the stage here, uh, you've got SageMaker that uh, is AWS's end-to-end -end machine learning uh, uh, framework, and then you've got Bedrock, which is a managed service um, for generative AI, um, where you don't have to, you know, pick your own compute. Uh, so yes, there, there is their machine learning is not being replaced uh, by generative uh, AI, is it, Paul? No, it definitely isn't. Um, and I'm, I'm kind of interested in uh, SageMaker. They've got some new features. They've got uh, five new capabilities they they announced. I'm not going to go through all of them, but uh, I'm taking a second look at uh, SageMaker for one of my own personal research projects, and it looks like it's going to fit right into it. Uh, SageMaker has been around, I think, since, remember when, like 2017 or 2019 in that area. Uh, like I said, it's a, it's a fully managed service. It's got a lot of tools and high performance, low cost, relatively low cost for machine learning. And uh, you can use it for just about any use case. So it, it looks pretty good. Um, the, uh, it's got, uh, the, the, uh, it's got, they've added uh, new inference capabilities. It's going to help reduce uh, uh, some of the foundation model deployment costs because that is pretty expensive. And also it's going to reduce the latency. Uh, you can deploy more, more than one uh, foundation model on the same uh, SageMaker endpoint. So, so that's a good thing. Um, another feature that they added that uh, is also going to reduce the uh, training time and and uh, the cost is what's called Hyperpod. Uh, it's a it's a purpose built uh, infrastructure for distributed learning at, or distributed uh, training at scale. So. That should do a good job. The one I like um, is they've also got, I'll mention this, uh, they've also got the uh, SageMaker Clarify, which is similar to what they've got for the, uh, the foundation models. You can go in, it'll, you can go in and it'll evaluate and select the best models for you. So that's in preview. Um, the feature I like, it's called, uh, uh, it kind of attracted me to SageMaker, it's called Smart Sifting of Data. Uh, it automatically goes in and it'll inspect uh, and evaluate the training data on the fly. So you can selectively kind of learn from from uh, using only the most the, the best data that you've got. So that's going to reduce training time. It's going to make your models a lot more effective. And they say it's going to reduce the cost up to about 30%. So they've got some good features, and I'm, uh, I'm going to look into it myself personally. So. That's great. And, you know, it, I like to see the continued innovation. I mean, tech is rarely about or. I think the only time that uh, we X'd out a, a technology uh, was when it came to mini computers, right? Still doing mainframes, still doing x86 servers, uh, still doing uh, remote desktop, uh, remote uh, remote apps. I guess we don't use dial-up modems anymore, but then again, <laughs> well, you can, uh, you can keep me, uh, keep me honest here on, you know, I think people still are, you know, selling services for, for dial-up for, uh, on the edge, but yeah, we're, we're very rarely is it. And by the way, if, if you can have a machine learning, uh, solution versus generative AI right now, you're going to, you're going to, it's, it's about 10 X less cost. Uh, as well. So, um, yeah, machine learning is alive and well, and SageMaker's end-to-end -end tool, again, SageMaker goes all the way from uh, data ingestion all the way to uh, deploying uh, these models. I'd like to see better linkage between uh, SageMaker and, uh, and Bedrock, or maybe it's there. I'm, I'm just uh, not aware of it. Um, and, and I'd like to see in SageMaker a more intelligent way to pick pick your uh, training and and inference uh, silicon silicon because you know kind of you have to go through uh, spec sheets from uh, Intel and AWS and um, Nvidia uh, and Qualcomm to figure out uh, you know you know choose your own adventure so it could, could be a lot easier and hey let's Qualcomm yeah. is bringing back uh, machine learning too Machine learning is really a great fit for quantum. Oh. Interesting. I didn't even think there would be a, uh, a what does that mean, Paul? Like um, uh, kind of simulating quantum through machine well, learning? 
no, you can use a, it's like, a, like, a, you know, recognizing signs and stuff in the uh, Tesla and automatic driving. I mean, they, they use, a, they can use quantum to do that type of machine learning. So. I got you. Sorry about that. Okay. Yes, we've seen that uh, from Quantinium. We've seen that. I was uh, doing working it. Mm -hmm. oh. Yeah. Yeah. No, thanks. Uh, thanks for that. Yeah. And it's funny. Like, uh, we're not forgetting about quantum anymore in this generative AI investments uh, continue. And without saying anything, there's some pretty big, inve pr pretty big, uh, pretty big, uh, pretty big announcements uh, coming up.